This is project one, video number two, the video in which we uh, code it up, uh, write, the, write the actual program. So uh, let's go to uh, Citrix and uh, locate the uh, MATLAB um, application. I'm going to go uh, current students and then information technology and Citrix. Obviously, you can just type in citrix.ansum.edu if you want, and then log in using the same username and password that you use to check your email. Find the MATLAB application under the applications. Click on it. Wait. And when MATLAB comes up, start programming. Let's see. Um, you got to get into the directory that uh, you want to work in. Everybody's got an H directory in their uh, MATLAB account. And uh, if you start up the email account from within Citrix, uh, you can. Uh, uh, get to it or uh, uh, fire up the internet browser within Citrix is the easy way to uh, to get to your uh, H drive. So uh, I'm on the H drive already. I do want to uh, get to uh, the particular area where I want to work. So I got a lot of files on the H drive. Yours might be, uh, I would expect yours to be a little bit less populated. So projects, project number one, and uh, my code. And I already got some in there. I want to delete that. And uh, start over on that for myself. So uh, I'm in the MATLAB command window here now. I'm going to type the word edit. That opens up the MATLAB editor, which I'll uh, shrink down so you can see what I'm doing. And uh, let's get back. Uh, see what I, what I got to do. I got to write a function that takes m1 as an argument and then calculates and returns this, uh, where uh, it's going to use the fact that m2 is equal to one kilogram, if I recall correctly. Let's uh, actually take a look at that. Yeah, M2 is one kilogram. I got it written down on my work here. All right, so to uh, create a MATLAB function, the first thing to do is to write the word function. Uh, I like to give myself a little space and put an end there to, r to remind myself to end the function. You need an end statement on the function. And then the syntax here is you write the word function and then the return variable. So uh, the name of the variable in which you're going to store the answer. And I'm calculating a percent energy uh, converted. Um, let's call it uh, percent E converted. Uh, or percent mechanical energy loss, if you want to uh, do it that way. I think I, I will go that way. Percent ME uh, loss equals, and I, uh, I want to check, make sure that's uh, indeed percent converted into other forms, percent loss, mechanical energy loss, that's cool. Equals, and then, so that's where the answer is going to be stored, and then the name of the function, I'll call it get. Uh, don't don't use the same uh, name for the function and the return variable. Uh, get percent mechanical energy loss, and I'll uh, I want want it to stand out as a separate word. So it's got to be uh, all one word. Um, you gotta, I think you can use uh, underlines and numbers in there as well, but uh, I just tend to use letters. You can use a mix of uh, 
capital in lowercase letters. And we're supposed to have one return variable. Uh, I call it M1 in my solution. So I'm going to use the same thing here, except uh, it doesn't know anything about subscripts. So I'll just call it uh, M1. So that is the argument of my function. So the function is get percent ME lost. And then its argument, like you're taking the sine of theta, this is uh, uh, this represents the function, the get percent mechanical energy loss, and the m1 would represent uh, the theta. So the function, if it were the sine, we'd have sine there and theta there. But uh, I'm writing a different function, and it does just take one variable. So you put the variable, the uh, uh, the argument. We call that the argument of the function in parentheses. Then I'm going to tab over so the body of my function is indented just to make it look good. You don't actually have to do that, but you should. Um, and uh, I need uh, m2 equals 1. It's uh, m2 is equal to 1 kilogram. I'll, uh, I'm going to put uh, semicolons in there in the end, but uh, without it, what happens is uh, whatever you do on that line gets printed. It's very useful for uh, figuring out if things aren't working out, figuring out what's going wrong, to just print everything, take all the semicolons off. But this is such a short little project, short little function that uh, I'm, I'm not going to, sometimes I leave them off to start with so I can see how it's going and then take them off later uh, when, when I'm confident that it's working. In other words, put them back in later so that uh, the uh, function is not printing additional stuff to the screen that it shouldn't be. And then I think I just have to evaluate this uh, percent ME lost using the expression that we solved for, uh, that I solved for in the first video. So it's M2 over the sum of the masses times 100%. So equals M2 divided by M1 plus M2. And then times is the asterisk 100%. Uh, uh, just 100. It, it doesn't know anything about units. So uh, I'll put a semicolon after that so it doesn't get uh, printed out on the calculation. And then uh, save it. So I'm in the correct directory, the one I called my code. And uh, be nice if you could see it. So let's uh, move this into the region within the window. No, it doesn't want to do that. So uh, I'll show you what I'm looking at down here. Uh, file name. It, it put the dot .m on there. Uh, by default, it assumed I wanted to, to save it uh, using uh, the function name. I gave it the function name get percent mechanical energy loss. So uh, it actually uh, you know, more or less suggested that. So really all I have to do is click the Save button. And it's saved. And then I uh, get out of the editor. I'm going to just minimize the editor. Go back uh, to the uh, the main uh, command window. And I see my function up there. So I'm going to try to run it. I'll get get percent m e lost. I think it was lost. Yeah, that's how I named it. And then the argument. And then uh, for M1, I'll try just a, a 1, 1 kilogram. See how that works out. I hit the Enter button on the keyboard. And uh, I'm getting get percent ME lost nothing. So uh, time to debug. I'm expecting it to give me a value. And uh, percent, I misspelled percent right there. So save it. So I, I need it to be the same as my return variable. I have to assign something to the return variable in order for the function to do what I want it to do. Uh, save it, go to the command window. I'm just going to hit the up arrow on the uh, keyboard rather than typing that all in again. Uh, the up arrow, uh, just uh, uh, and now I just hit the up and, the, and then the down arrow. Hitting the up arrow uh, gives you the most recent 
uh, thing that you entered at the command level and hitting it twice gives you the second most reach, etc. And if you go too far like I did there, then you go and hit the down arrow to get back where you were. So uh, rather than typing it in again, I just hit the up arrow and then hit the enter key and it says 50. 50% 50 of the energy is lost in the case of M1 being equal to M2. Uh, that one I should be able to do in my head. Um, if they're equal to each other, then uh, it's like that's an M. M plus M is 2M, so I get just one half, and it should turn out to be 50%. Now, uh, let's think about physics. If uh, M2 is huge, well, M, uh, M2 is fixed, but if M1 is really, really tiny, it's like uh, just uh, sticking into a wall, like throwing a dart at uh, uh, a truck and uh, having it uh, stick. Um, and so, uh, a parked truck, by the way, so I would expect all of the energy is lost, all the mechanical energy is lost, all the kinetic energy of the, the dart is converted into something else if you throw it into a house or a truck or something uh, massive. So, if M1 is really, really tiny, I should get nothing. Let's look at the case where uh, M1 goes to zero. That is, uh, I, sh I shouldn't say I should get. I should get nothing. I should get a hundred percent energy loss if I'm throwing it at a house. All right. So I'm going to try this with zero, and that worked. And if it's really super massive, then I wouldn't expect a little one kilogram object to to slow it down much at all, so uh, uh, virtually no change in kinetic energy. Um, so zero percent lost if this is some huge number. I'll go nine 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 a bunch of nines there. And sure enough, one time this means one, and the e is to be read times ten to the, and then minus eleventh, which is essentially zero energy loss for this huge mass for M1. So uh, I would say uh, for the little checks that I can think of, our expression for percent mechanical energy loss is uh, consistent uh, both with the expression that we solved for and also just with the, uh, the physics in general. So this represents the conclusion of video number two in which I just write the code. I'm going to save the documentation of the code for video number three. It's really a good idea to document as you go along, and that's important when you write big, long programs, but this being a short program, uh, we, don't, we don't have to. One of the things I would ask you is use your imagination to think up your own name for uh, the return variable in the name of the function. Please don't use the same name of the function that I used. Um, yeah, there are an awful lot of options there. You don't. Uh, yeah, there, it's very easy to avoid using the one that I use. So uh, show that you're uh, putting a little bit of uh, creative thought into it. Uh, choose what you think is the best name for the return variable and the best name for the function. Make sure that they are different from each other, and that uh, when you save uh, the file, uh, you save it uh, using the name of the function but uh, with a, a dot .m on the end of it, and that's what uh, uh, MATLAB suggests by default anyway. So let's call it a wrap for project number one, video number two.